day ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is part 3 in our Deuteronomy 28 punishments in the Septuagint. Let's begin shall we. Quote, And thou shalt have over thy head a sky of brass, and the earth under thee shall be iron. The Lord thy God make the rain of thy land dust, and dust shall come down from heaven until it shall have destroyed thee, and until it shall have quickly consumed thee. Stop! According to HuffPost, under worst drought since the Dust Bowl, here's a personal quote, personal entry. July 15, here we go. 102 degrees, corn and everything is mostly discussed. It is really too hot dry, discouraging, and devilish to do anything. July 21st. I have seen a good many bad years in this country, but I never saw any worse than this one. Corn is practically all destroyed now. Pastures are as bare as January. That was Nebraska farmer Don Hartwell, in which he wrote these disparaging words in 1936. It was the darkest hour of the twin tortures of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. Now the long dry season of 2012 has struck American farmers with a drought that threatens to surpass those devilish times. Crops are suffering. Many farmers will not produce the yields they have in past production years. And too many will not survive to plant another crop. Minority-owned farms, usually the most precarious in their operations, will be especially hit hard. Most farmers rely on farm subsidies or federal crop insurance to cover the crop losses. Many black farmers and other small producers cannot afford federal crop insurance premiums. They are just too expensive. This year's drought seems to be different than those of the past. Many states have experienced record number of 100 plus degrees temperature for weeks at a time. No crops can withstand such a temperature without rain. Example, people, the punishments of Yah never stop. You are just caught up in these people devices. What about those who have made it, you wonder? I don't know, could be. Their names are not written in the book of life to begin with, or they are not truly Israel. But we do know some of the so-called African Americans are still exhibiting specific characteristics of the punishments of Yah among the tares today. Why am I harping on this, you ask? Because if you do not acknowledge we are still under each and every punishment, no matter how the blue-eyed devil has double-tongued twisted it into an accomplishment, what incentive is there for you to cry out to your God to be saved? I'm harping to show you our punishments were meant to be a humbling mechanism, but the evildoers have turned the requirements of humility to be saved into a freaking achievement to be praised. Wow! I wouldn't be surprised to find out the song We shall overcome wasn't channeled by a demon. I'm also harping to show you what you now deem as normalcy and inherent truth that were self-evident are nothing more than the handy craftsmanship of master sorcerers, wizards, and alchemists working and recruiting you with a job to do their wicked bidding under the guise of the betterment of society, which can only mean their matrix of deception and Yah's word, thus your destruction, are perpetual. Yah's awesome. What he say he gonna do, he do. But let's continue with the video subject, shall we? Quote, The Lord give thee up for slaughter, before your enemies, thou shalt go out against them one way and flee from their face seven ways, semicolon, and stop. 
there is a semicolon behind the word ways. And everybody knows what that means about what comes next, right? If not, don't fear and let your hands be strong. Because the word and pretty much does the same thing as a semicolon in this situation. Almost like y'all wanted to make sure this happened to no other people but one upon the face of the planet. Meaning, whatever comes next is in conjunction to what we just read and must be looked upon as a whole and not partially. You get it? You got it? Let's go. Quote, and thou shall be a dispersion in all the kingdoms of the earth. Stop. Okay, the first part. According to Wikipedia under tip who tip. Quote, this asshole was, oh, my bad, my bad, that was me. That, that's just, that was me. Let's continue. Tip who tip was a Swahili Zanzibari slave trader. Stop. So much for those who claim these Africanus heathens are Israel. But let's continue. Quote, he was known by the people of the African Great Lakes as Tipu Tib, after the sounds that his many guns made. Let me read that again. It's important. He was known by the people of the African Great Lakes as Tipu Tib, after the sounds that his many guns made. An ivory trader, explorer, plantation owner, and governor he worked for a succession of sultans of Zanzibar. Inner stage left, the Ottoman sand crackers we read about in early videos. Let's continue. Tipu Tip, trader and slaves for Zanzibar's clove plantations. As a part of the large and lucrative ivory trade, he led many trading expeditions into Central Africa by constructing profitable trading posts that reach deep into the region. Let me read that again. As a part of the large and lucrative ivory trade, he led many trading expeditions into Central Africa by constructing profitable trading posts that reach deep into the region. Stop. This one paragraph proves my Psalms 83 series beyond a shadow of a doubt. In this one paragraph, we see established trading posts reaching deep into the region. Meaning, the cracker didn't come and steal anyone. The scriptures be true. We were sold by our enemies to the cracker. This is why we see yet again, for such a lucrative commodity to be running around all naked in the jungles, being eaten by tigers, lions, and bears. Wink, wink, Mr. Charlie. There is no mention of any wars, scrums, scuffles, hell, not even a, I dare you to knock this off my shoulder square off. How interesting is that anomaly, people? But wait, this bastard's methods was very well known. He would sneak up on the unsuspected village and make as much noise as they could. When the villagers would come out to investigate or make ready for hand-to-hand -hand defense, Tipu would start shooting their, gun, their mini guns into the air, corralling the people by the direction of the gunfire into a garland of traps set at the beginning of the furnace of Affliction Avenue. But wait! With only a slight shift in perception the same thing going on to this this same thing is going on to this very day be honest now when the white boss comes around everybody scatters like roaches to their prospective stations now let's deal with the prophecy that eliminates all who claim to be who they truly are not i was thinking about i was thinking to myself about how to express this example and I said, scribe. Then I said, back. What's really happening, bud? Then I said, you can't use that example again. 
Then I said to me, why not? Then I said back, because you already went over how to Google Afro anything to show a large population base of so-called African descent from colonial times living within their borders. Remember, you showed them Afro-Iranians, Afro-Iraqis, Afro-India, Afro-Chinaman, Afro-Russian, Afro-Wetback, Afro-New Yorkans, Afro-Egyptians. In, in essence, you showed them Afro-Sand Crackers, Sand Colors, and Afro Crackers already. No, there isn't a people identified as Mexican Chinese in Chinaman land. No, there isn't a people identified as Latino Iraqi in Baghdad. No, there isn't a people identified as Native American Mongolian, is there? Nope. Then I cut in and said to me, well, hmm. I guess I need to act like some of these Hebrew Christians. Mulatto Jesus! Oh, baby steps, scribe. Baby steps. I'm sorry, people. I guess I just need to act like nothing was said and we didn't just read what we just read, huh? Then I replied to myself, nothing wrong with just moving on, bud. I'm out. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the video subject, shall we? Quote, and your dead men shall be food to the birds of the sky and to the beasts of the earth, and they shall be none to scatter them away. Stop! Notice how specific in nature this passage is. It says, your dead men, and not the dead, or anything that would denote indiscriminate death. Seeing the Roman slaughter enacted with such malevolence, macabreness, men, women, boys and girls' bodies laid lifeless throughout our dwellings, whether by sword or disease. Another perceptual avenue, seeing the so-called African Americans were servants in Africa, thus a commodity, which can only mean your death hurts the bottom line, and that can only mean this scenario is not plausible in light of understanding the power of the dark side of money through trade. Same thing on this side of the world with Mr. Charlie America. The greatest white man ever, mind you. Wink, wink, Mr. Charlie. Well, at first, well, at first that is. See, while the colors were their property, to kill you would be, again, hurting their bottom line in one fashion or another. It wasn't until Reconstruction where they didn't have a vested financial interest in us anymore when this part of the punishments kicks in. These were the turbulent times of the now infamous lynchings and everything that went with it. Yes, some women were lynched, but it was the males that were des desecrated through normalized castration and medieval torture techniques from the old country and left to be a quote look out nigga the clan is getting bigger reminder to all you know to maintain the natural order of things yet our parents didn't adhere to even the white Jesus they professed to be in their hearts how didn't he say Quote, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Well, all the evildoers had to do to know exactly how to concoct their potion of poison upon the elect was to listen to their heart sing and give them their heart desires, knowing full well, quote, mankind's heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You wanted to be like Mr. Charlie? Act like him? Work next to him? Spend your money with him? Heck, you even breached white decency and want to sleep with this woman like him. Trigger alert. Trigger alert for Mr. Charlie. But not understanding. 
A deal with the devil is just that. A deal. You desire something slash demand and for a small price or one day the Don will require a service that you will be obligated to honor. Either way, the evildoer's motto is gas, grass, or ah! Nobody rides the earth with success trained for free. By catering to your internal desires, they don't need to contend with your spirit in morality matters. Believe me, if you desire it and don't have the wisdom, no matter how freaking insane and astonishment of mind your desires are, your mind will supersede logic and reasoning and find a way to justify doing it. Just ask the chicks. Just funny you. I don't mean nothing by it. In this case, our grandparents were blinded with the desires of their heart and didn't hearken to wisdom of separation from those committing genocide upon them. Nor did they display the understanding of you will never be able to change a person's heart. Check out just how the seductive spirit of desire shadows over you to accomplish the perceptual mind glaze needed so you do not unplug and become aware. Gentle strangers, in this hand, a red pill. Take it. So the necessary perceptual antivirus freeing you from the mental free range, free range construct manipulated and designed with the sole purpose of substituting real time reality with their matrix of delusions of delirium. And in this hand, a blue pill. Take it and immediately hit the red button on this video and do not call the cops on me please. If you have five seconds to decide. Four, three, two, one. All right. I want to start off by admitting. I want to admit. I kind of feel for Mr. Charlie on this one. I mean, if you can't embrace and be embraced by those of like-minded genocidal views, where can you go? But have one of you thought about Mr. Charlie's feelings? No. All you can muster up is selfishness with your liberal agendas and miscongeniation ideas. I'm sure it's a mind screw to him. Just like the one just like one of the torture techniques used on the prisoners at Abu Ghraib. You know, play loud heavy metal music until the Muslims thought Satan was talking to them. You guys are doing the same thing. How? Because no matter how much he has shown you, he truly hates your existence. To the point, they created the catchy phrase of white flight to describe how fast they were trying to get away from you colors. I mean, even though they have committed the worst things imaginable to you, and there was at least five major factions with the plan of separating from and arming themselves against these demons, you decide to drop a psychological bomb on them by basically refusing to leave them alone. Believe me, people. While you were singing, we shall overcome, all the cracker heard was, and I am telling you, we are not going. You're the best oppressor we've ever known. There's no way we could ever go. No, no, there's no way. No, no, there's no way we could live without you. Just the thought of living without you. We don't want to be free. We stay in, we stay in. And you, and you, and you, we gonna make you love me. I know you love us. You can scream and shout. You can kill us if you want, but we not walking out. We will take the beating, 
push, strike, and kill. We're not going to leave you. There's no way we win. I am telling you we are not going. You're the best massa we've ever known. There's no way we could ever go. No, no, there's no way. There's no way we could ever live without you. We don't want to live without you. We don't want to be free. We stay in, we stay in, in you, in you, in you. We gonna make you love me. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. With lawsuits and protests and threats and riots, you gonna love. We gonna make you. We gonna force you. Kick it. Me.